Today I'm going to be building a brand new programming language, but there is one catch. All of the syntax for this language must come directly from hate comments I've received here on YouTube or over on my TikTok. And then at the end of this video, I'll be putting the language to the ultimate test, aka seeing if we can use it to pass a coding interview question. So to get started, we need to collect hate comments. And to do this, what I did is I simply scrolled through all of the comments on my YouTube channel, sorting by comments I hadn't responded to because I respond to pretty much all of the positive comments. This left me with most of the negative comments I've ever gotten, and I just found the ones that were most interesting. And now that I have sort of a syntax for the language being these comments, I also need these semantics for the language. So what exactly does each comment mean? And to figure this out, I just went through all of the comments and decided what made the most sense to me. So for example, unsubscribe is going to mean decrement. So now that we essentially have a grammar for the language, we need to of course implement. And for that, we have two options. We could make a compiler or an interpreter. A compiler is simply a program that converts one programming language into another. Usually this means converting it directly into machine code or assembly. Although you can also write a compiler to compile it down to C and then use the C compiler to go the rest of the way. Alternatively, we can write an interpreter. An interpreter just directly interprets or executes the code without any compilation step. In this case, I think either would work, but I did decide to go with an interpreter just because they're usually a little bit easier to implement. So now how do we even implement an interpreter? Well, there's many ways, but what we're going to do is first of all, sort of parse the code. And what I mean by this is we're going to break it into tokens and each token is simply going to be a word. So we have sentences, these sentences again from the comments, and each word in that sentence is going to be a token with a few edge cases that we'll have to take care of, but for the most part, one word equals one token. And now once we have tokens representing the code, we need to actually figure out what those tokens mean. And for that, I created sort of a tree-like structure. So this is a small part of it. So for example, if it started with the word you, that would be the first token. And then we look to see what the next token is and we follow it down in this tree. So for example, if you say, you know what makes me sick, you would follow this line here and you would get to the fact that this is the start of a function. Or if you said, you don't know, and then something else, that would bring you to this log function. So essentially that means we're logging something out to the console. So we just loop through all of the tokens until we get to the end. And for each token, we go down that tree data structure, which I actually implemented using an object. And when we get to the leaf nodes of that tree, they are just going to be functions that we call. I also threw together a very basic website that we can use to actually test the interpreter. So it has an input box, you type in your code, click run, it runs the interpreter and just spits out the output. If statements were a little bit complicated to implement, but the way I ended up doing it was by using a stack. So the way the stack works is it keeps track of all of the different condition results. And then whenever we get to the end of an if block, we remove one element from the stack. So we pop one condition result off of the stack. And if at any given point that stack contains a single failed condition, well then we are in a failed if check and thus none of the code actually executes. With if statements done, I thought while loops would be very simple, but fundamentally they're actually very different and I was very wrong. So the difference between an if statement and a while loop is that while loops could have to run that condition again, as well as they could have to run the entire code block again. So what we do is we store all of the tokens for the condition as well as the code block. And then if we need them again, we just append them back into the tokens list. Functions were also a little bit complicated because they need to take in parameters. But once I figured out the parameter part, it was actually pretty straightforward and they work pretty much the same way as loops in that they just keep track of the tokens for all of the code and the function. And when the function is invoked, they just add those tokens into the token list. I thought about doing some pre-processing to essentially hoist all of the functions to the top so that we could actually invoke functions before they're defined, but I decided against this just because it seemed like a huge time sink. I think there's also some bugs related to recursion. Recursion does work, but it seems to sort of bug out if you have multiple different base cases. And honestly, I just can't really be bothered to try to fix that right now. And now for the big finale, can we actually solve a coding interview question using this brand new language? So it turns out LeetCode and AlgoExpert and all of these websites don't actually support our new language. So I am going to have to do this in our test environment, but we're going to try to tackle the very classic reverse a linked list question. So here we can see we have some code that just creates a linked list object. And then we need to reverse that linked list. So below it, we have the code to create a function. And this function is just going to create two pointers and iterate through the list, reversing that list in O of n time. And we can see if we run this code that it is actually going to work and we end up with a reversed linked list. Now, I hope it goes without saying that you should not use this language for absolutely anything. The interpreter is filled with bugs and it was written by somebody who honestly has no idea what they're doing, AKA me. But that said, this was a lot of fun to make. So if you did enjoy this video, let me know and subscribe to see more content like this and I will see you next time.